Hi, in this module, we will talk about grapes. Grapes or Vitis vinifera is a perennial and deciduous woody climbing vine. It is originated in Western Asia and Europe. Grape has a refreshing taste, is widely used in India as a table fruit and it is also exported worldwide. Therefore, grapes have a good commercial value in the Indian fruit market. The major production states of grape are Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. Now let us look at the climate conducive for grape growth. Temperature, occurrence of frost, rainfall and relative humidity play a vital role for commercial cultivation of grape. Generally, grape requires a hot and dry climate. Regions with high rainfall and humidity is not conducive for grape cultivation. Hence, the coastal districts are not suitable for grape production. Grape is successfully grown in regions with a temperature range of 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius and rainfall of 500 to 600 millimeter. The weather should be clear for three to four months during the cropping period. What about the land for grape? Land that slopes to the south should be preferred. The soil, grape can adapt to a variety of soils. It grows and performs best in deep medium textured soils which are loams and sandy loams with good drainage and low salt content. Salinity is the major hindrance in the development of grapes. It grows well in soils with a pH range of 6.5 to 7.5. Now let us shift our focus to the planting distance. Planting distance in the vineyard should be based on variety, soil type and climatic conditions. For the soil type which is heavy and for the climate which is humid, the table should be at a distance of 10 feet by 6 feet and the vine should be 8 feet by 5 feet. For the medium soil type in a humid climate, table should be 9 feet by 6 feet and vine should be 8 feet by 4 feet. For the soil type which is light, for humid climate, table should be 9 feet by 5 feet and vine should be 6 feet by into 4 feet. Now let us look at the same requirement for the dry climate. In a dry climate, for heavy soil type, table should be 8 feet 5 feet and vine should be 8 feet by 4 feet. For medium soil type in a dry climate, table should be 8 feet by 5 feet and vine should be 8 feet 3 feet. And for light soil type in a dry climate, table should be 8 feet by 4 feet and vine should be 6 feet by 3 feet. Pit digging. For easy intercultural operations, either the row is broken at 200 feet length or the field can be divided into smaller plots. Trenching up to 2 feet or ripping up to 4 feet is required where soil depth is not adequate for root growth or there is hard pan in the upper layer of soil. Trenches should be filled with farm waste loose soil and bhumitra at the rate of 20 tons per acre along with fertilizers Jai Kisan Super 16 at the rate of 500 kgs per acre and Jai Kisan Urea at the rate of 100 kgs per acre.
Let us now shift our attention to selection of root stock. Use of root stock is essential for sustaining grape under adverse conditions. Dugridge variety having resistance to salinity and drought is widely preferred for use as a root stock. Now, let us look at the selection of variety. The variety selection should be based on purpose, market demand and climatic conditions of that area. Table grapes are Thompson Seedless, Sonaka, Sharad Seedless, Tase Ganesh, Flame Seedless and Red Glow. Raisin grapes are Thompson Seedless, Manaka, Super Sonaka and Manik Chaman. Wine grapes are Shonen Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon. Now let us talk about planting of rootstock. Planting of rootstock should be done in February after cold period is over. Planting distance should be 10 feet between rows and 6 feet between plants. Furrow irrigation should be given 2 to 3 days before planting. Small pits of 1 feet by 1 feet by 1 feet are then made after VAPSA, which is the field capacity condition of the soil. The plants of rootstock are then placed in the center of the pit with Bhumitra at the rate of 20 tons per acre for initial nourishment and chloropyrifos dust at the rate of 10 grams per pit for controlling termites. Between February to March, planted rootstock is allowed to grow as it is still June to promote root development. After 50 days of planting, once the roots are established, three uniform and healthy shoots are trained to bamboo and excess and unwanted shoots are removed. Removing side shoots step by step till the time for grafting should be done to clear lower one and a half feet portion of the rootstock. Grafting is carried out during September to October month on two shoots of rootstock. Proper care should be taken up at the time of wedge grafting. The scion selected for grafting should be from a healthy, high yielding and disease free vine. The cuttings selected should be well matured and of same thickness to that of stock. The selected scion cutting should be dipped in 0.1% trophy solution for an hour to prevent diseases. A slanting cut of at least 2 inch should be taken at the basal end of the scion so as to expose the pith. At least one side of the scion and rootstock should match with each other for successful union. A plastic strip of 200 micron thickness should be used around the union so that no air or water passes in. Irrigate the grafted plant immediately to maintain the sap flow for better graft union and avoid desiccation. The sprouting starts 7 to 10 days after grafting and healing of graft joint completes in 45 days. Care should be taken that the plastic used to wrap the graft joint should be loosened after 21 days to avoid stem girdling effect.
Jackson urea at the rate of 0.5 kg and Purna 19 at the rate of 1 kg per acre should be applied from 15th day of grafting through fertigation at every alternate day up to 3 months. To achieve the maturity of stem, sulfur 50 at the rate of 1 kg per acre should be applied through fertigation for one month before recut. To achieve maximum graft success in the vineyards, frequent removal of suckers should be given priority. This process is called de suckering. After grafting, plants may not grow uniformly due to uneven sprouting of scion and variation in the temperature. To overcome this, a recut should be done during February. Now let us look at erection of trilysis. Erection of trilysis is essential for grape cultivation. Trilysing allows for separating the shoots and stapling them to the wires. This prevents the leaves from crowding each other, allowing maximum light penetration and also encouraging air circulation thereby preventing rot. Why and tree trilysis are suitable for humid areas and higher degree of mechanization. In general, rows and direction of the arms should be north-south direction for maximum utilization of sunlight. The cordons of east-west direction leads to canopy shading. On the screen, you can see the measurements of white relysis and white relysis looks like this. Now, let us also look at the measurements of T relysis along with the 45 degree angle which is required. And in practical, T relysis looks like this. Now, let us talk about manuring and fertilizer application. After April pruning, Manuring is done by applying Bhumitra at the rate of 8 tons per acre. Chemfree is used to supplement the nutrient requirement of crop. It is applied at the rate of 25 grams per plant. Mangala neem cake is applied at the rate of 500 kgs per acre. Now, let us look at the fertilizer application schedule for grapes. This schedule is based on nutrients. For April pruning, which is back pruning or foundation pruning, for the growth stage, which is pre-bud differentiation, which is between 1 to 30 days, the month of operation is between April to May. Ni nitrogen is required at the rate of 80 kgs per acre. For the stage, which is bud differentiation, which lasts between 31 to 60 days, the month of operation is between May to June. The nutrient required is phosphorus at the rate of 213 kgs per acre. For the post-bud differentiation stage, which is between 61 to 120 days, the month of operation is between June to August. The nutrient required is potassium at the rate of 80 kgs per acre. For October pruning, which is forward pruning or fruit pruning, during the stage of pre-bloom between 1 to 40 days, the month of operation is between October to November. The amount of nitrogen required is at the rate of 80 kgs per acre. For the growth stage, bloom set and shatter, which is between 41 to 70 days, the nutrient required is phosphorus at the rate of 107 kgs per acre. For the stage berry growth up to Veracean, which is between 71 to 105 days, the month of operations is between December to January. The nutrient requirement is of nitrogen and potassium, each at the rate of 80 kgs per acre. For the growth stage, which is Veracean, Veracean to harvest, which is between 106 to 130 days, the month of operation is between January to March. The amount of potassium wired is at the rate of 80 kgs per acre. 
for the growth period which is after harvest which is when the rest period is greater than 20 days the month of operation is between april march to april the amount of nitrogen required is 26 kgs per acre phosphorus is at the rate of 35 kgs per acre potassium side is at the rate of 266 kgs per acre which brings the total requirement of nitrogen at 266 kgs per acre phosphorus at 355 kgs per acre and potassium at 266 kgs per acre now let us look at the fertilizer application schedule for grapes on the basis of fertilizers let us start with the April pruning, which is back pruning or foundation pruning. For the stage, which is pre-bud differentiation, the time of operation is between April to May. The crop requires Jackson urea at the rate of 175 kgs per acre. For the stage of bud differentiation, which is between 31 to 60 days, the crop requires Jackson super 16 at the rate of 1350 kgs per acre for the stage which is post bud differentiation between 61 to 120 days which is between june to august the crop requires jaikisan suraksha at the rate of 150 kgs per acre for october pruning which is forward or fruit pruning for the stage which is pre-bloom which is between 1 to 40 days for the which is between the months of october to november the amount of jackison urea required by the crop is 175 kgs per acre for the stage which is bloom set and shatter which lasts between 41 to 70 days the months of operation are between November to January. The amount of Jackison Super 16 required by the crop is 700 kgs per acre. For the stage which is berry growth up to Verizon, which is between 71 to 105 days, the months of operation are between December and January. The amount of Jackison urea required is 175 kgs per acre and Jackison Suraksha required by the crop is 150 kgs per acre. For the growth stage, which is between Verizon to harvest, which is between 106 to 130 days, for the operation months between January to March, the amount of Jackison Suraksha required by the crops is 150 kgs per acre. And for the time period, which is after harvest, in which the rest period is more than 20 days, the months of operation are between March to April. The amount of Jackison urea required by the crops is 60 kgs per acre. Jackison Super 16 is at the rate of 225 kgs per acre and Jackison Suraksha required is at the rate of 50 kgs per acre, bringing the total requirement of Jackison Urea at 585 kgs per acre, Jackison Super 16 at 2275 kgs per acre and Jackison Suraksha at the rate of 500 kgs per acre. Now, let us look at the fertigation schedule for grape, which is 100% fertilizers are given through fertigation. For April pruning or back pruning, for the stage which is shoot growth, which is between 7 to 45 days, we need to apply Purna 19 at the rate of 2 kgs per acre per day. The total requirement of Pune 19 then being 760 kgs per acre. Avishkar should be applied at the rate of 4 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement for the entire period between 7 to 45 days to 152 kgs per acre. Purna Boon 45 at the rate of 0 0.2 kgs per acre per day, bringing the total requirement to 9 kgs per acre and Jekisan urea at the rate of 0 0.4 kgs per acre per day, bringing the total requirement of Jekisan urea for the entire shoot growth period to 15 kgs per acre. For the growth stage, which is bud differentiation, with, for the period which lasts between 46 to 60 days, we require for boost 52 at the rate of 4 kgs per acre per day, bringing the total requirement to 60 kgs per acre. 
Boon 45 at the rate of 0.7 kgs per acre per day, bringing the total requirement to 60 kgs per acre. Sorry, 10 kgs per acre. Jai Kisan Urea at the rate of 1 kg per day per acre, bringing the total requirement of Jai Kisan Urea to 15 kgs per acre. Atom 61 at the rate of 2.9 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 175 kgs per acre. For the growth stage, which is post bud differentiation, which lasts between 61 to 120 days, the amount of sulfur 50 required is 0 0.6 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 34 kgs per acre for the whole 60 days. Calinit 19 at the rate of 0 0.3 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 15 kgs per acre. And Jack is on urea at the rate of 0 0.2 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 14 kgs per acre. For the critical growth stages which, for October pruning, which is also known as forward pruning, for the stage which is pre-bloom, which is between 15 to 40 days, the Products required are Avishkar at the rate of 4 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 100 kgs per acre. Boon 45 at the rate of 4 kg per day per acre, again totaling to 100 kgs per acre. And Jekisan Urea at the rate of 3 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 75 kgs per acre. For the time which is broom set and shatter, for the time period which is between 41 to 70 days, the crops require Purna 19 at the rate of 4 kgs per acre per day, bringing the total requirement to 120 kgs per acre for the entire number of days of bloom set and shatter. Boon 45 is required at the rate of 3.3 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 100 kgs per acre. Atom 61 at the rate of 2.5 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 74 kgs per acre. And Jekisan Urea at the rate of 1.3 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 40 kgs per acre. For the next growth stage, which is berry growth to fruit development, for the time period between 71 to 105 days, the Products required are Purna 19 at the rate of 1.7 kgs per acre per day, which is brings the total requirement to 58 kgs per acre. Boost 52 required at the rate of 1.3 kgs per acre per day, bringing the total requirement to 45 kgs per acre. Boon 45 required at the rate of 1.4 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total to 50 kgs per acre. Calnet 19 at the rate of 2.3 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 80 kgs per acre. And Jekisan Urea at the rate of 1.1 kg per, a per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 40 kgs per acre. For the last growth stage, which is food development to harvest, which lasts between 106 to 120 days, the product required is sulfur 50 at the rate of 2 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 30 kgs per acre. And Jekisan Urea, at the rate of 2 kgs per day per acre, bringing the total requirement to 30 kgs per acre. There are a few things that we need to take care of. We should always apply Calnit 19 separately. We need to apply Mangala Magnesium Sulphate at the rate of 25 kgs per acre, once during April pruning, which is during shoot growth between 7 to 45 days after pruning and in October pruning at pre-bloom stage, which is 15 to 40 days after pruning. Now let us talk about leaf petioli analysis. Leaf petioli analysis is an effective and reliable tool to know the nutrient status of grapevine, especially when the vines reach the bearing age. Petiolis are most sensitive to the changes in nutritional status 
and their composition helps in taking correct decisions for nutrient management, thereby detecting hidden hunger and nutrient deficiencies of plant before the deficiency symptoms become visible. Grape petiolus are sampled twice for regular monitoring for nutrient status of vines during the bud differentiation and full bloom stages. What is the care required during petioli sampling? The sample should be representative of the vines, same soil type and cultural practices. Select only the leaves from healthy shoots that are well exposed to sunlight. Do not select vines on the border of vineyard or those which have received nutrient sprays. Avoid contact with metal surfaces. Bud differentiation stage. Fifth leaf from the base during this, this stage which is between 40 to 45 days after foundation pruning. Full bloom stage. Petioli should be collected from the leaf opposite the first cluster or bunch from the bottom of the shoot. At this stage, approximately 70% of the flower caps have been dropped. Collect one or two petiolis per vine for analysis. 100 petiolis in total should be collected. Remove the leaf blade immediately after the leaf has been detached from the shoot. Place each sam sample in a well-labeled, clean paper bag to deliver to the laboratory immediately. Optimum range of petioli nutrient contents. For the macronutrient, which is nitrogen, in the bud differentiation stage, it should be 1.2 to 1.5%. And in the full bloom stage, it should be between 1.44 to 1.8%. Phosphorus. And the bud differentiation stage should be between 0.387 to 0.472%. And in full bloom stage, it should be between 0.283 to 0.356%. For potassium, during the bud differentiation stage, it should be between 0.590 to 0.680%. And in the full bloom stage, it should be between 1.61 to 2.95%. For calcium, the requirement is 0.727% to 1.03% during the bud differentiation stage. And during the full bloom stage, it is between 0.508 to 0.81%. For magnesium, during the bud differentiation stage, it should be between 0.877 to 1.28%. And during the full bloom stage, it should be between 0.579 to 0.870%. Now let us focus to micronutrients. Iron should be 54 to 80 ppm during the bud differentiation stage. And during the full bloom stage, it should be between 32 to 80 ppm. Manganese should be between 42 to 209 ppm during the bud differentiation stage. And during the full bloom stage, it should be between 76 to 174 ppm. Zinc should be at the, at the tune of 30 to 88 ppm during the bud differentiation stage and should be between 51 to 130 during the full bloom stage. Copper should be at the rate of 5 to 10 ppm during the bud differentiation stage and also during the full bloom stage. Boron should also be between 30 to 50 ppm between to 30 to 50 BP, uh, ppm during bud differentiation and full bloom stage each.
Now let us talk about the irrigation management in grapes. Water is a critical component for grape production and has a profound effect on the crop. Its requirement changes as per the crop growth stage. Now let us look at the guideline for irrigating grape. For the growth stage in April pruning, for the growth stage which is pre-bud differentiation, which is between 1 to 30 days, the month of operation is between April to May. The approximate water required is between 14,000 14, to 20,000 liters per acre per day. For the stage of bud differentiation, which is between 31 to 40 days, the months of operation are between April to May. The approximate water requirement is 14,000 to 20,000 liters per acre per day. For the stage of bud differentiation, which is between 41 to 60 days, which is between May to June, the approximate water requirement is between 5,000 to 6,000 liters per acre per day. For the stage of post bud differentiation, which was between 61 to 120 days, the month of operation is between June to August. The approximate water requirement is 3,000 liters per acre per day. For the stage of post bud differentiation, which is between 121 days to fruit pruning, which is the month of operation for which is between August to fruit pruning, the approximate water requirement is 3,000 liters per acre per day. Now let us talk about the time of October pruning or forward pruning. Now let us look at similar requirements for October pruning, which is forward or fruit pruning. For the stage of pre-bloom, which is between 1 to 40 days, the months of operation are between October to November. The approximate water requirement is 10,000 to 14,000 liters per acre per day. For bloom set and shatter, the period between 41 to 55 days. For the months of operation between November to January, the approximate water requirement is 2,500 to 3,000 liters per acre per day. For the stage of berry growth and development, which is between 56 to 70 days, the months of operation are between December to January. The approximate water requirement is 5,000 to 8,000 liters per acre per day. For the stage of berry growth up to verizon, which is between 71 to 105 days, the months of operation are again December to January. The approximate water requirement is 5,000 to 8,000 liters per acre per day. For the time period of 106 to 130 days after pruning, which is the growth stage of verizon to harvest, the months of operation are between January to March. The approximate water requirement is 14,000 to 16,000 liters per acre per day. And after harvest, which is the rest period greater than 20 days, the months of operation between March to April. Water requirement will depend upon soil type and weather conditions. Use of low discharge emitters for long duration helps in easy and uniform distribution of irrigation water. Lateral should be clipped with wire neatly to avoid any staggering in between. Let us look at the training of the rootstock. After the recut of rootstock in the field before grafting, the selected shoots of rootstock are trained to the tam bamboo sticks so as to encourage straight growth of trunk after grafting. This helps in storage of required food material in the developing trunk. Training the trunk of the grafted vine. The grafted vine is tied with bamboo stick so as to train the trunk straight. Training of primary arms on trellis can be seen on the screen. Immediately after the recut of grafted vines, the shoot grows vigorously. The shoot should be pinched 6 inches below the first wire so as to train the primary shoot in the slanting position. This will avoid direct sunlight exposure of the primary arm. Now let us look at the training of the secondary arms or cordon development. The cordon development should be done based on the vigor of the vine. Due to the presence of prominent apical dominance cordon development and training should be done following stop and go method. This will help to obtain complete cordon with desirable length during the first year. We can see this in the following video.
pruning. It is done to control the size and form of the vine. It is also done to increase the fruiting area on a vine and also to maintain balance between vegetative growth and fruiting and to obtain better quality from the vine. The vines are pruned during April by leaving basal single bud on the shoot proximal to the cordon. Since the whole portion of cane is pruned, hence it is called as back pruning. Fruit pruning is done during October for getting fruits. During fruit pruning, the matured canes are pruned either after knot on the subcane or at 6 to 7 bud position in case of straight cane. The canes are cut back in April by 1 to 2 buds which develop into canes in 4 to 5 months. The removal of dried canes is called back pruning or growth pruning. The ideal stage for shoot thinning is at 4 to 5 leaf stage. This growth pruning helps in reducing the loss of nutrients from the vines. The number of shoots retained on vine should be 0.7 to 1 square feet for quality produce. The canopy should be open during April to September to facilitate op optimum sunlight for effective photosynthesis. We can see on the, in the image on the screen how sprouting happens after April pruning and how the growth happens after April pruning. This is the canopy management of April pruning. This is the correct stage of sub cane. Each shoot should be vertically positioned to harvest maximum sunlight required for fruit bud differentiation. For making sub cane, pinch the shoot to seven leaves at nine leaf stage so as to develop a proper sub cane. Top the side shoot again at fifth leaf when it is seven leaf stage. Impose soil moisture stress at 12 which is seven plus five leaf stage to increase the fruit bud differentiation. Top the shoots to 15 leaves which is seven plus eight when the shoots start maturing. This helps to store enough food material and advance the cane maturity. We can see April pruning in the following video. Now let us look at the canopy management of October or fruit pruning. In the month of October, these canes are pruned for fruiting. This pruning is called forward pruning or winter pruning. Vines which have attained the age of one year can be subjected to this pruning. Canes of 6 mm and less diameter are removed during fruit pruning. Swab, hydrogen, cyanamide, only to apical 2 to 3 buds on each cane. This helps in early and uniform bud break. Shoot thinning is to be performed at 4 to 5 leaf stage. Retain one bunch for every 1 to 1.5 square feet of canopy for quality grapes. Excess shoot removal should be done at 4 to 5 leaf stage. We can see the October pruning in the following video.
Now let us look at bunch thinning. Bunches start appearing at third leaf stage, which is the pre-bloom stage. Retention of all bunches will hamper food or fruit quality. Hence, bunch thinning is done at pre-bloom stage. Retention of shoots in bunches are based on cane diameter. When the cane diameter is 6, the number of bearing shoots should be 1 and the number of non-bearing shoots should be 0 and number of bunches to be retained is 1. When the cane diameter is between 6 to 8 millimeters, number of bearing shoots should be 1, number of non-bearing shoots is also 1 and number of bunches to be retained is also 1. When the cane diameter is between 8 to 10 millimeters, number of bearing shoots should be 2, number of non-bearing shoots should be 1 and the number of bunches to be retained are 2. When the cane diameter is more than 10, then the number of bearing shoots should be 3, number of non-bearing shoots should be 2, the number of bunches to be retained are 3. We can see bunch thinning in the following video. Now let us look at shoot pinching. Shoot pinching is a part of pruning mainly done to promote fruit bearing and regulate the current season's growth. This is done when the main shoot attains 7 to 8 leaf stage. During pinching, the tip of the mature shoot is pinched by retaining only 5 nodes. As a result, the terminal bud along with one or two laterals resume growth. These laterals are called subcanes. Buds up to the third node from the base on the subcane are observed to be bearing fruits. Berry thinning. In a bunch, there are 600 to 700 berries. Retention of all these berries will not allow the bunch to develop due to heavy competition amongst the berries. Hence, berry thinning is an important operation to achieve proper bunch size. To achieve a bunch weight of 450 to 500 grams, having 18 diameter and 3.5 to 4.5 gram berry weight, 100 to 120 berries are enough. Removal of excess berries at 4 to 6 mm berry size can help in proper utilization of food material. This is done by two ways. One, use of GA3 at the rate of 40 ppm at the time of 50% flowering or by mechanical thinning, which is use of scissors to remove the ratches and then the berries can be thinned out. The next thing to talk about is bioregulators. Use of bioregulators is necessary for ratchet elongation, cluster growth, berry thinning, berry elongation, berry size and improving shelf life. 
Application of bioregulators at different stages after fruit pruning is the next thing we will discuss. As we can see in the table on the screen, one to two days after pruning, for the growth stage which is called after pruning, the purpose of applying chemicals is uniformity in bud break. And for this, the chemical used is hydrogen cyanamide 50 SL. The dosage for this is 30 to 40 milliliter per liter. 21 to 24 days after pruning. pruning. For the growth stage, which is parrot green spray, the stage is called pre bloom. The purpose is elongation. For this, we apply gibberellic acid, GA3 technical, at the rate of 10 ppm. 23 to 27 days after pruning, for the growth stage, second pre bloom dip, the purpose is ratchet elongation. And for this, we apply gibberellic acid GA3 technical at the rate of 15 ppm and urea phosphate at the rate of 1000 ppm. 48 to 50 days after pruning, for the stage which is after berry set 3 to 4 mm, for berry development, we apply, we apply gibberellic acid GA3 technical at the rate of 40 ppm. Apart from this chemical, we need to also apply another chemical which differs for white seedless and color seedless. In the same stage, for white seedless, we need to apply porchlorphenor on porchlorphenoron CPPU 0.1% L at the rate of 2 ppm. And for color seedless, we need to apply the same chemical at the rate of 0.5 ppm. 60 to 62 days after pruning, which is after berry sets to 6 to 7 mm. For berry development, we need to apply gibberellic acid, GA3, technical at the rate of 30 ppm. And 50 to 70 days after pruning, once before or at Virasian, Virizon, we need to apply calcium nitrate at the rate of 5000 to 10,000 ppm. 100 to 110 days after pruning, which is 8 to 10 days prior to harvest, we need to reduce wet drop and for this we apply NAA which is naphthalene acetic acid at the rate of 50 to 100 ppm. The next thing is girdling. Girdling is necessary for increasing the berry size in grape. Removal of 2 mm skin thickness on trunk just at 4 to 6 mm berry size helps in achieving 1 to 1.5 mm extra berry size. The next thing is harvesting. Harvesting and post-harvest management practices have prime importance in maintaining the quality of table grapes. Grapes should be harvested after ripening. The minimum TSS of 16 degree bricks and sugar acid ratio of 20 has been fixed under Agmark as maturity standards of quality grapes. Uniform color development is a reliable index of ripening. We should harvest only attractive bunches which meet the quality standard by using sharp cicatiers or scissors. Hold the bunch by stem 
or penduncle while harvesting as we can see in the image on the screen. Bunches should be harvested during early morning hours before the berry temperature rises above 20 degrees Celsius so that berry temperature can be brought down to 4 degrees Celsius by pre-cooling within 4 to 6 hours. If rainfall has occurred, do not harvest for 3 to 4 days. Harvested bunches are placed in clean, perforated plastic crates lined with bubble paper or newspaper to avoid damage to berries and are kept in shade for wines of subsequent transfer to pack houses. Trimming of immature berries, diseased, shriveled, undersized, off color, underdeveloped, uneven berries, or side branches of ratchet should be carefully removed by using sharp, long nose scissors. Do not pull berries by hand as the leaked juices become a site for decay causing organisms. For domestic packing, For export packing, Now let us look at the grading classification. Grapes are graded as per AgMark standards. We have three classes of grading, extra, one and two. The extra class is the superior quality and for this the characteristics are such that berries must be firm, firmly attached, evenly spaced along the stalk and have their bloom virtually intact. Berries should be free from defects, with exception of very slight superficial defects, provided that these defects do not affect the general appearance of the produce, the quality, the keeping quality and the presentation in the package. These are the examples of extra class quality which is acceptable, as we can see on the screen. For the class 1 classification, which is a good quality, the berries must be firm, firmly attached and as far as possible have their bloom intact. May be less evenly spaced along the stalk than in the extra class. Class 1 allows slight defects which can be a slight defect in shape, slight defects in colouring, very slight sun scorch affecting the skin only. These are the acceptable colouring for class 1. We have highlighted the area where the colouring is impacted. Class 1 cosmetic defects allowed as can be seen in the screen. Pigmentation due to sun which is the slight reddish pigmentation. Straggliness on the red glow and sugar stains which are very minimal. These are the examples of superficial skin defects allowed. We can see the superficial skin defects on the images on the screen. The defects which are not allowed in class 1 are very severe as can be seen. Class 2 classification. Table grapes not qualifying for inc inclusion in higher classes but which satisfy the minimum requirements are class 2. Bunches may show slight defects in shape, development and colouring provided that these do not impair the essential characteristics of the variety. Berries must be sufficiently firm and they should be sufficiently firmly attached and still have their bloom. They may be less evenly spaced along the stalk than in class 1. 
in class 2 the defects are allowed provided that the table grapes retain their essential characteristics as regards the quality the keeping quality and presentation the defects which are allowed are defects in shape defects in coloring slight sun scorch affecting the skin only slight bruising and slight skin defects we can see some examples of the defects which are allowed for class 2 we can see an example of scattered berries and uneven berries. The cosmetic defects which are allowed can also be seen on the screen. The color allowed or limited red glow which is allowed is also screen on the screen. The color which is not allowed at all can be seen on the screen. The deviations which are not allowed for the sun scorch. Provision concerning size. Size is determined by the weight of the bunch. Minimum bunch weight is 75 grams. This provision does not apply to packages intended for single servings. The tolerance for all classes is 10% by weight. Bunches not satisfying the requirements as regards sizing is allowed. Sales package, one bunch weighing less 75 grams is allowed to adjust the weight provided that the bunch meets all other requirements of the specified class. The grading as per weight is done as the following. For the large berry in extra class, the weight has to be 200 grams and the small berry has to be 150 grams to classify in extra class. To classify in grade 1, the large berry has to be 150 grams and the small berry has to be 100 grams. To classify in grade 2, large berry has to be 100 grams and small berry weight has to be 75 grams. Provision concerning tolerance. When the grapes are not complying to specific classes quality requirement, then the, the provision for tolerance for extra class and class 1, class 2 is 10%. Percentage which is allowed of next class is 0.5% for extra class and 1% of class 1. The percentage of DK which is allowed in extra class is 0%. In class 1 is 1% and class 2 is 2%. There are many other provisions concerning presentation. The first one comes under uniformity. Contents must be uniform in package. It should contain only bunches of the same origin, variety, quality and degree of ripeness. The extra class grade bunches must be approximately uniform in size and colouring. A mixture of table grapes of distinctly different varieties may be packed together in a package provided that they are uniform in quality. Visible part of the contents of the package must be representative of the entire contents. Packaging of fruits. We can see how the, pack, the packaging of fruits work. Now let us talk about the pests and diseases impacting grape. Preventive spraying should be adopted to minimize the impact of pests and diseases. Care should also be taken to ensure that the right amount of agrochemicals are applied and they adhere to the maximum permissible limit standards. We first talk about pest management. First pest is aphid. Aphid occurs when climate is hot and dry and it causes deformed leaves. To manage aphid, we need to spray the crops with parameter at the rate of 0.5 milliliter per liter of water. The second pest is mealy bug. It occurs when the climate is hot and dry and it leads to deformed leaf. To manage mealy bug, we need to spray the crops with parameter at the rate of 0.5 milliliters per liter of water. The third pest is leaf miner. They occur throughout the year. It causes white tunnels in leaves which are caused by larvae. To manage leaf miner, we need to spray the crops with chlorosan at the rate of 2.5 milliliter per liter of water. The next one is caterpillar. It occurs throughout the years. Caterpillar feeds on leaves and fruits. To manage this, we spray the crops with chlorosan at the rate of 2.5 milliliter per liter of water. The next one is red mites. Red mites also occur throughout the year. Red mites under red mites, cell sap is sucked and plants become stunted, which leads to the flowers being deformed. We need to spray the crops with afsan at the rate of 1 gram per liter of water. The next is thrips. Thrips causes white specks or strips of gray florets. Flower heads also are deformed, silvery grayish spots on the leaves, brown spots on leaf petioles and mid veins are caused. To manage thrips, we spray the crops with xylo 
at the rate of 1 milliliter per liter of water. Now, let us talk about disease management. The first disease we'll talk about is anthracnose. The organism name of anthracnose is Phytophthora phytogia. It leads to the crown of the plant becoming black and plants are wilted. To manage this disease, we need to drench the crop in Mangala COC at the rate of 3 grams per litre and 150 milliliters per plant. The next disease is root rot. The causal the organism name of root rot is Pythium. It leads to the root skin becoming easily removed, plants becoming wilted. To manage root rot, we need to drench the trophy at the rate of 2.5 grams per litre, 150 milliliter per plant. The next disease is wilt. The causal organism name of wilt is fusarium. It leads to rotting of stems, xylem and phloem turn black. Plants are wilted and then they later die. To manage this disease, we need to drench the crop with Mangala COC at the rate of 3 grams per litre, 150 milliliter per plant. The next disease is powdery mildew. The causal organism name is erysiphe. It leads to powdery growth on leaves and flowers. To manage powdery mildew, we spray the crops with trophy at the rate of 2 grams per litre. The next disease is Dowdenai mildew. The casual organism name is erysiphe. It leads to powdery growth on leaves and flowers. To manage this disease, we need to spray the crop with trophy again at the rate of 2 grams per litre. The next disease is Botrytis. The causal organism name is Botrytis cinerea. It leads to powdery growth on leaves and flowers. To manage this disease, we need to spray the crops with trophy at the rate of 2 grams per litre. This finishes our module on grapes. Thank you.